you start to see then about 5,000 years ago, right around the time that people really do intensive, intensive, large-scale irrigated agriculture, the rise of what we call civilizations. And I've got civilizations there in quote marks, and the, I'll explain why in a minute. But first, I want to show you a series of pictures. Great Pyramids of Egypt, uh, the Greek Parthenon, Machu Picchu in Peru, um, the Colosseum, Taj Mahal in India, I think this is an English or a French castle, and I want to ask you, what did all of those things have in common? Well, for one thing, they're really big buildings, but the thing I want to get at more is that they are all produced by societies which have several traits in common. So let's talk about the term civilization. In anthropology, um, sometimes, as with any other science, we use a term differently than the way it gets used in sort of everyday English. So, for example, in everyday English, when we say civilization, it generally just means societies. And when you say civilized, it implies, like, sophisticated. That's not what we mean here. So just, like, banish that from your mind. Because from an anthropological perspective, every society is very, very sophisticated and it's own manners, right? Every society has complex, sophisticated ways of adapting to its environment. Every society has um, detailed, complex religious systems, communication systems, so there's not like more and less sophisticated societies. So that use of the term civilized is uh, nonsense. Um, what we mean by that instead in anthropology is that a civilization is a specific type of society or culture that has certain types of traits that we don't see until about 5,000 years ago. And they're really weird in the sense that they're a type of society that's really obvious once it shows up in archaeology, right? You can like tell when you've found a quote civilization uh, ruin. And they're weird in the sense that they're totally different than anything that came before them and different from a lot of the other things that were going on at the time. So civilization is a society that has this cluster of traits. They have very large populations, so thousands of people sort of uniting under one banner, um, or even millions of people, or even at this point billions of people, right? Uh, civilizations such as India or China that have over a billion people. The civilizations or cultures also that possess cities. Uh, so a city, from an anthropological perspective, is basically any settlement of human beings that's over about 5,000 people. Um, so you suddenly start to see the rise of cities. A c civilization also has agriculture. Again, there's very few, almost no, um, true civilizations that started without agriculture first starting. That seems to be the basic condition that has to happen. And then there's uh, societies that have not always, but typically writing systems, which is, of course, a huge change in human communication, for better or worse, right? It changes the dynamic completely when suddenly you can put communication into a static form that gets passed down through generations. And then civilizations also, and this is very critical, have what is called a state form of politics, which we'll talk about in a second. So those five or so traits, sometimes they'll also, people will also put monumental architecture, so basically big buildings, those five or six traits are what we mean when we say a civilization. So again, we're not saying sophisticated, we're saying a specific type of kind of strange <laughs> society that arose about 5,000 years ago, but it's the type of society that you and I find ourselves in, right? Um, and it's the society that most people, most human beings now find themselves in. There are still um, foraging groups in certain areas that are largely uh, left to their own devices, but more and more and more people find themselves either in cities or controlled by people living in cities, so to speak, right? Um, controlled under a nation or an empire or a form of government uh, that involves cities, that involves hundreds of thousands of people, that involves writing in a state form of government. Um, so when I talk about a state form of government, let's kind of briefly discuss what I'm gonna, what I mean by that. So we have a common vocabulary, and I'm gonna teach this concept to you really, really fast, and I'm not gonna expect you to have it memorized. It's because it's something we're gonna talk about in a couple of weeks when we talk about politics, and we'll go way more into that then. So let me just talk about this like really fast. Um, there was a famous anthropologist, Elman Service, and he proposed that basically, when we look at all the different ways that societies are organized across human history and across modern societies, what we see is that there's kind of four basic types of human societies. Bands, tribes, chiefdoms, 
states. Okay, for the vast majority of human history and hominin history, rather I should say, all it was all bands. Groups of 25 to 50 people, mostly related by kinship as well as friendship, um, and with not super well-established leaders other than people that sort of had informal authority. Most things are kind of happening by consensus. You then have, about 12,000 years ago, the rise of tribes and chiefdoms, groups of thousands. Um, these are organized slightly differently. This one's more hierarchical in a sense. This one's more organized by um, kind of cultural institutions, like a common religion or a common language. And these terms are not necessarily the way they're used in modern English. Again, this is the anthropological use of the term, not the way we use this term in my modern English. Anthropologists um, get annoyed to no end with the way that people use the term tribalistic uh, in modern discourse, not only because it's uh, potentially insulting to, for example, the federally recognized Native American tribes, but also because it's a misuse of this scientific term. But that's a story for another day. Anyways, tribes and chiefdoms. Then you have, sort of within the last 5,000 years, this new type of society, um, a civilization, which has a state form of um, governance. So what do we mean by a state form of governance? What we mean by that is... A society that's huge, typically thousands or up to billions of people, but it's one that has government. And government, I don't just mean leaders, because all societies have leaders of some sort. What I mean is bureaucracy, full-time political elites, full-time politicians. I mean clear hierarchies where some people definitely have more power, status, and prestige, and you know who those people are. And to some degree, that exists in tribes and chiefdoms, but it becomes much more pronounced in states. Um, the idea that, for example, that seems pretty normal to most um, Americans of CEOs sort of making thousands of times more of the wage of their lowest paid workers uh, would sort of be unthinkable in a foraging perspective, right? Even the most prestigious person would not be sort of getting thousands of times the meat that, um, you know, the weakest person in this society in this metaphor is sort of holding on to or the least prestigious person. So state societies are kind of unique in the very sharp lines between classes and pretty exaggerated forms of uh, statuses, exaggerated is the wrong word, um, stratified types of classes of wealth and power. But perhaps the biggest thing that makes a state society different from any other thing like a tribe or a chiefdom or a band is the relationship between the government to subject and specifically the governmental monopoly on the use of violence. That should say use, not control. And what I mean by that, that's kind of a weird phrase, so let me explain what I mean by that. What I mean by that is that in state societies, you have things like police forces and standing militaries that can, at the direction of the legal system and the political system, uh, impose order or impose punishments on the citizens of that society. Um, so the idea that, for example, if I don't pay my taxes, eventually my wages get garnished. If I refuse to come to that and maybe say, you know, I'm not going to pay taxes anymore and I'm making the, you know, free republic of me, um, that's going to result most likely uh, in police forces or something, right? Eventually becoming involved. And so, and that could involve imprisonment, right? Uh, the fact that we are very used to the idea of a society where you can be put in prison, a society where you can be arrested, a society where in some areas of the world and in some parts of the country, uh, you can have the death penalty applied. That seems natural and normal to us because it's what we were raised in, most of us. Uh, it's what most human beings nowadays are raised in, is some form of uh, society where there's, again, a legal system and a political system where force can be used against the citizens to make them follow the rules. But what's interesting about that is that for the vast majority of human history, that didn't exist. And for the vast majority of human groups, for the vast majority of history, that didn't exist. Um, in bands, yes, certainly violence occurs in bands. Um, but usually social control is through consensus, sometimes through ridicule and mocking of people that aren't conforming, sometimes through religious institutions. There's a lot of ways in which people are controlled, but it's not through, again, something like a police force, something like a death penalty. Um, imposed formally by government. That doesn't mean that people don't kill each other in banned societies, just that it's not done by a group of people called the government that are sort of socially sanctioned 
to force their will on other people. Um, similarly, in tribes and chiefdoms, although you start to see more coercive forms of social control, for the most part, things are still by consensus, by cultural decree, um, sometimes by religious power in the sense that a chief might be thought to have a unique supernatural power, but not by, again, things typically you don't see things like police and prisons as much. It depends. Um, Imperial Hawaii was starting to develop prior to colonialism, for example, more of like a kind of a standing or very active military force. Um, but for the most part, state societies are really, really unique in the sense that there are systems where the highest level of the society can impose by force the rules on the lower levels of society. Again, it seems normal until you consider the fact that it's very unusual uh, from a human historical perspective. So that's kind of what we mean um, by civilizations then. Again, just to review, large social scale, cities, writing, big buildings, and biggest thing is states, governments, elites. Totally different. Totally, totally.